last year, I went through a torture that every high schooler must endure. Health class. <laughs> now, I remember health class very well, and there was one thing that struck me the most about it. It was our unit on substance abuse. I remembered sitting there and the teacher lecturing us about how drugs affected you, how you would go through withdrawals or how your teeth would start rotting out. But that is only part of the story. Today, I'm going to tell you the other part of the story. The emotional ripples that substance abuse causes. Think of substance abuse as a rock being thrown into a pond. As it hits the water, it creates a ripple effect. Small waves that get larger and larger as they move further away from the epicenter. This story starts about four years ago, where my hypothetical pond was clear and there was no ripples in it. Four years ago, I was a happy 12-year-old living a life. I was immersed in many activities, especially in STEM and performing arts. I had a mother and father who both worked, and two sisters, one older, one younger. I was never really close with my extended family, but my immediate family, we did everything from going to Disney World to doing chores together. One Saturday morning, I woke just like any other Saturday. But that day wasn't just an ordinary day. My two younger cousins were coming to visit. Now, at the time, this struck me as strange because I've never really seen them outside an occasional family reunion or the short glimpses I got when I went to my grandparents' house. I mean, I would have conversations with them, but my cousins didn't even know my name. My mom said that they were staying for the weekend and we were to make them feel at home. As she said this, red flags popped up in my head. I had so many questions like, why now and what's going on? But I just kind of let it all go. That weekend turned into a week. And that week turned into a month. And as I look upon this time now, this was when the ripples were just beginning. Small inconveniences and annoyances. Like when I would go to pack my lunch in the morning and I would reach my hand into the chip bag and there were no more chips. <laughs> As I reflect upon this now, these were just the small things. By this time, I could no longer suppress the questions I had inside and not satisfied with my parents' answers, I started investigating, skulking around while they were having private conversations. This was a point in my adolescence where my entire perception of the world changed forever. I overheard my parents talk about how my uncle had been arrested. And in my sheltered brain, I thought my family was all above being arrested, that they were all moral people. But soon I would learn the hardest thing I've learned in my life so far. I learned that my uncle was a drug addict a heroin junkie. I was so overwhelmed with this juxtaposition between the world I thought I knew and the sad reality of what it truly was. My mom started opening up to me and my older sister, telling us the stories of what was truly going on in our family. I would hear stories of how my cousins would go to sleep in a bedbug infested house or I would overhear conversations they had with my mom where they were questioning her saying, there's not supposed to be bugs in my hair? Or when I would look at their arms and I would see the cigarette burns on them. I was so angry inside. I thought, how could anyone let this happen? I felt like I was being constantly knocked down with every new story I heard. Not even a year later, about two weeks before Christmas, I woke to my mom and sister talking, and I could tell something was very wrong. I remember my mom calling me into my sister's room. She looked at me and said, your uncle died last night. 
The truly cruel part of this was, I didn't even feel sad. I had become so numb to the constant waves knocking me down that I didn't feel anything anymore. All I could think was, this is all over. But sadly, I was wrong. After my uncle's death, my family fell into anarchy. Where my life had been previously peaceful and happy, the new normal became constant fights over visitation and custody of my cousins, and angry family members breaking, to my, breaking into my house. There were school nights where I would sit by my door with a baseball bat, praying that I wouldn't have to use it, just praying that this would all stop. All I had left was a mother who soon became ill and had to leave her job. A father who has to work nights just to keep us afloat. An older sister who went off to college and dreads coming home because of fights. A younger sister whose world was so scrambled that she shut everything out, threatening suicide. Two younger cousins who were scared to go to bed at night and me, a then 14-year-old who stayed sane by throwing himself into extracurricular activities, spending 14 hours a day at school. And I have to say, if it wasn't for the overwhelming support I got from friends and teachers, I would not be standing here today. My story it's nothing special. If you talk to thousands of other people who have substance abuse in their families, you will hear the same story. Mine? It's just one way events can unfold. There are people out there that are more affected than I ever was, who have experienced more devastation in our lives than we can even fathom. Already, Projections show that by the end of 2017, 2,000 overdoses will occur in southwestern Ohio. That's 2,000 deaths. We live in a society where we're taught right from wrong not to do this or that, but rarely do we ever stop and think about what our actions can do to others. I propose a society where we have a health class where we don't just teach our younger generations about how drugs affect you, but we teach them about the adverse effects they have on everything around them. So what I want you to think to yourself is, where am I in this ripple effect? And next time, before you make a decision, don't just think about how your decision affects yourself. Think about how your actions affect others.